Hi, I'm Tom. This is Mina. And this is Kitty Help Desk. So today I just wanted to talk a moment about how you could tell the difference between when your cats are playing with one another and when they're fighting one another because those can often seem like the same thing. It can be really difficult to tell if they are wrestling in a way that they're both enjoying or if one cat is overwhelming the other cat, maybe one cat is an unwilling participant. And there was a study that came out in January of this year. I'll put a link to the study down in the notes below. Um, and at, in that study, there weren't any super firm conclusions, but the biggest indicator that they found between playing and fighting was vocalization. When the cats were playing, even if they were wrestling, chasing one another, running around, very sort of rough play, they were never really making a lot of noise. They weren't or hissing at each other. But when one cat suddenly decided that they didn't want to play anymore and the other cat did, there would be a verbal cue that told the other cat, stop, I've had enough. And that can turn on a dime. I mean, cats can often play together to a point and then they reach that point and they're like, one of them just is like, okay, I've had enough. It's a lot like petting a cat. If you pet your cat and they're enjoying it and they're purring, then all of a sudden their fur on their back starts to ripple and their tail starts to thrash a little bit. They're telling you, okay, all right, that's enough, that's enough. And, and if you don't pay attention, you're probably going to get bitten. If nothing else, a little love ah, kind of snap, you know, like stop, just, just stop. So cats do that between one another too not just between themselves and humans, they do it with other cats. So if they're playing and they're rough housing and everybody's happy, but all of a sudden one cat's like, okay, this is too much, I, I, I don't wanna play anymore. Then <laughs> the other cat may just continue to play because it's still having fun. And it's just really important to notice when that switch occurs. You can also tell from body language that that whole tail thrashing thing is a huge indicator of stress. So if they're playing and, and if they get real puffed up, you know, or is thrashing their tail, then there's not, that's not play anymore. Now, the, the next question that I always get is, well, what do I do about it if they're fighting? How do I break that up? And a lot of people will get too involved. And, you know, you might get scratched and bitten and clawed yourself because a lot of times that, that energy will get redirected at whoever is close by. And that's normal for a cat. The cat's not saying they want to attack you, but they've already got that energy going and that you just happen to kind of get in the way, right? So the best way to sort of break it up is to do so in a way that doesn't sort of implicate you as an aggressor because nothing makes your cat like you less than if you are harming them in some way. They perceive harm, even if it's, an innocent enough interaction. If they perceive that you're trying to harm them in some way or trying to stop them from doing something that they wanna do, then they're going to see you as a problem, not as someone that they wanna have a relationship with. So generally speaking, what I usually recommend is that someone take a large thick towel and throw it over both cats or at least the aggressor. And usually what happens when you do that is the cats will kind of hunker down under the towel because they don't really understand what just happened. Now I'm under this thing and it doesn't hurt them in any way. It just sort of puts a damper on what's going on and sort of puts a pause on their energy level at that moment. And it will allow, if one of the cats is the aggressor and the other one less so, the one that's less so is likely to sort of get away and escape. And you know, oftentimes that running away encourages a cat that's enjoying the play to chase, you know? It can kind of trigger a chase. So if the cat's covered up while that cat, you know, kind of makes its exit, then that's easier to sort of, now everybody can sort of calm down independently. And it sort of just disrupts that overall energy. Now, sometimes you don't have to resort to a towel. If they, if you're paying attention to their body language and you see this sort of 
building up. Maybe the tail's thrashing, maybe the tail's getting puffed up, or, or there's sort of, maybe there's a display of scratching on the carpet or something, you know, where it's, there's a, suddenly this sort of uh, unhappy energy about it. Then you can sort of just sort of calmly walk through the middle of the situation, get between them, and disrupt it. Maybe you pet each cat on each side of you, pet them, and you just sort of change the situation. And that can be enough to sort of derail that energy enough for it to dissipate. So it's important that you not sort of try to physically, I'm going to grab you and move you out of here and that you're really going to get hurt. You know, even a cat that is normally very friendly with you is really not going to be if you're picking them up and moving them around against their will especially when they feel like they're in the middle of a fight. So thanks for watching. Please uh, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.